Shalom, and welcome to Darche Choshech, Pathways of Darkness, a linguistic analysis of the wrong ways of Proverbs. Today we will cover the verbs that mean to go astray. There are two related roots, uh, very similar, that mean to be in error or to go astray. The first of these is Shagag, Numbers 15.28. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly, when he sinneth by ignorance before Yahweh, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. Psalm 119.67 Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Previously we saw that the person who does not fill their mind with Torah is very easily deceived and led astray. And so now we begin to see the beginning of that process. There's a noun, shigaga, which is uh, the actual error which is con committed inadvertently. Leviticus 22.14 And if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly, then he shall put the fifth part thereof unto it, and shall give it to, unto the priest with the holy thing. So we see that even uh, if you commit an error by mistake, by lack of knowledge, or because it's out of your awareness, there's still remission for that sin. There's still uh, an atonement that can be made. Joshua 23, that the slayer that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. So you can have an accidental death, that person needs to flee to the cities of refuge, which are outlined in Torah. The second verb is shaga, which is uh, shin gimel hay, and it can also mean to wander about. When we talked about all the words in Psalm 119 that reflect what the word of the Lord is, almost all of them have something to do with moving in a direction, heading in a direction. And now we see uh, if you begin to wander off the path, that's at the beginning of the pathway to sin. Numbers 15.22 And if ye have erred, and not observed all these commandments, which Yahweh hath spoken unto Moses. Proverbs 5.23 He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Instruction helps prevent us from going off the path from going astray. Proverbs 21 Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The idea of being deceived is the idea of going off the path, wandering away. Ezekiel 34 6 My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. The obvious two-letter parent root for this idea is Shin Gimel. And if we look at these two uh, letters in the Paleo-Hebrew, we see two pictures. The Shin is a picture of the teeth, if you have looked at the teaching on the word for, which means to, shnayim, it comes from this root, this idea of shin. And it's not so much that because you have two teeth in the front, which is what the shin looks like in this paleo picture, but the idea is of change. Going from one state to another state, you get uh, two sets of teeth, for example. And I would recommend for you to go over and look at the teaching on shnayim on, on the word to. So the idea behind the shin, the letter shin, is not just teeth, but it has to do with changing. The gimel is a picture of a foot. And what happens is if you change where your feet are going, uh, then you will wind up straying from the path. Uh, it might be by accident, but it can only be by accident if you don't know what the correct thing is. You need to fill your head with Torah so that you can do what the right thing is and your feet will stay on the right path.
One of the cognate roots is Shin Gimel Ayin, Shaga, which means to be crazed or deranged. Deuteronomy 28.34 So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Mad as in crazy. Hosea 9.7 The days of visitation are come, the days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool, the spiritual man is mad, for the multitude of thine iniquity and of and the great hatred. This word in Hebrew, when you see it even in Tanakh, it appears in a pu'al participle and it is pronounced mishuga. Uh, if you talk to maybe some American Jews who come from Eastern European Yiddish background, they say mishuga, and this is exactly where the word mishuga comes from. In modern Hebrew, they tend to use it more in the Hitpa'el, the Hishtagea. Another cognate root is Shechach, which means to forget. Genesis 40, 23. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. If we forget the ways of Yahweh, we will begin to stray off a path. Deuteronomy 4, 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. We are exhorted so many times in Deuteronomy not to forget the teachings of Moses, the teachings of Yahweh, so that we can walk a straight walk. Psalm 119.16 I would delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt no, be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also forget thy children. What is the remedy for straying off the path for wandering. As we have said, we must remember the Torah of Yahweh. Psalm 119.61 The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. Psalm 119.83 For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet I do not forget thy statutes. So even in difficult situations, we are uh, obligated as followers of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to remember his Torah and to keep it to the best of our ability within the constraints of our difficult situation. Matthew 18, 12. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? Yeshua always has his eye on us, and when we tend to wander off the path, he will send someone to bring us back a right, to bring us back to the path, to be found. He has great compassion on us. Mark 12:24, And Yeshua answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? It's the same problem. You will make a mistake if you do not know the scriptures. It's up to you to learn them and keep them in your heart. Our consolation is in our compassionate God and his Messiah. Hebrews 5.1 For every high priest taketh from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant, and on them that are out of the way, in other words, they have strayed off the path, for that he himself is also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to make offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So this is talking about the, the priests, the Kohanim, who are called by God by virtue of their tribal affiliation, to be the high priest, to understand their own mortality, their own fleshliness, and to have compassion on those who stray. And we see that there is always available 
an atonement, a sacrifice to be made for these kind of sins where we wander off the way from lack of knowledge or from being distracted. And this, this Kohen is also compared to Yeshua. Verse 5.5 five. So also Messiah glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. And the Father made Yeshua a high priest to serve in the tabernacle in heaven, and we can expect therefore the same compassion from him, that when we stray, he will come out to look for us, to put us back on the right path. He will make a way for us to atone or sacrifice so that our sin may be cleared from our consciousness. Next time we'll go on to another related word down these uh, wrong pathways. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim al keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.